the Romani people, in English colloquially known as gypsies. Over the centuries, they have migrated across vast distances, cultivating a very rich and unique culture unlike any other. Today, Romani communities are found across the world, each with their own distinct twist on tradition. There are many varieties of the Romani language spoken today, with every one of them having varying degrees of influence from the languages of their respective countries. Today we are talking about Erromincella, a community of Romani people living in the Basque country, and their unique mixed language. To preface, there are two things I should mention. I started this video by saying that the Romani people are colloquially known in English as gypsies. Some people might consider that term offensive, while others might actually proudly self-identify as gypsy. I personally have no connection to this culture, so I cannot be the judge here, but it is a word that has historically been used a lot, sometimes with a negative connotation, but sometimes also just as an ethnonym. Also, this video is meant to be informative, I am in no way trying to offend anyone, and I only really use this word later on in the video in specific contexts where it's appropriate, whereas otherwise I just refer to the whole community as a Romani. Another thing I must say is that this is a topic which not only does it have barely any information on it online, it doesn't really have much information on it at all whatsoever, really. It's a relatively fresh area of research in both the histories of the Romani people and the Basque country. Also, the few sources that I was able to find, some of the information seems a bit conflicting and a bit unreliable, so do take a lot of what I'm saying with a grain of salt. All of my sources are listed in the video description, however, nearly all of them are either in Spanish, in French, or in Basque. You have been warned. We'll first talk about a little prehistory, then we'll briefly talk about the language itself and why I think it's one of the coolest linguistic anomalies I have ever come across, and then we'll talk about the research efforts that were made in the past, as well as its status today. Let's begin. The common consensus is that the Romani people originated in India, as evidenced both by genetics as well as linguistic similarities between various Romani languages and certain Indo-European languages in India. For reference, the Romani language, along with Hindi, Urdu, Sanskrit, Punjabi, Bengali, Nepali, and many more, are all Indo-Aryan languages, a sub-branch of the Indo-Iranian languages, which itself is a sub-branch of the Indo-European language family. They all have a lot of things in common. The Romani were always known to be nomadic peoples, which is how they would eventually end up in Europe. There is evidence to suggest that the Romani had already reached the Balkans by the 11th and 12th centuries. And by the late Middle Ages, they had already found a home in many parts of Eastern, Central and Western Europe. Today, the Romani people can be found in North and South America, Australia and even some places in Africa. A lot of them would eventually settle down in their respective countries, but the vast majority wouldn't really integrate due to a combination of many factors. But the main and most important one being that they have been persecuted and discriminated against for pretty much like their entire history. And they have been expelled and hunted down everywhere they went over and over and over again. Even today, they're not particularly liked either in many places. Europeans love to talk about how welcoming and tolerant and open-minded we are, but when it comes to Romanis, not so friendly anymore. The Romani are hard to classify as a single ethnicity, but rather forming many distinct groups based on geographical, cultural and linguistic differences. There are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of various Romani subgroups, clans, communities and whatever else. However, one of the main big ones in Eastern Europe are the Calderash Roma. Their name comes from the Romanian Calderar, literally meaning boiler maker, and they were traditionally known to be very good metal workers. And so, around the early 1400s, a group of Calderash Roma kept migrating further west and would eventually end up in the Basque country somewhere around the year 1425, which is how Erromincella would come to exist. Furthermore, in comparison to other regions, the Romani in the Basque country would integrate relatively well, and were definitely having a better time existing than in many other places in Europe. They adopted many Basque customs, including the Basque language. However, of course, they weren't entirely safe from persecution. For example, in 1602, the Royal Council of Navarra would require all vagabonds, which included the Romanis, to serve a mandatory six years of ship duty and they didn't really have much of a say in that. But in 1780, the courts of Navarra passed a law which to an extent protected the rights of the Romani and required 
the authorities to take care of them, find them locations for settlement, and honest occupations and ways of living. Which, when it comes to legislation relating to Romani people, pretty progressive for the time. So again, being a Romani in Europe in the late Middle Ages and Renaissance wasn't all that great. In some places it still isn't. But out of all the possibilities, the Basque country was one of the better choices, I guess. And it's with this in mind that Yosune Munoz, one of the lead researchers of Erro Minchela, explains that the reason for the creation of the language is they started using it in emergency situations to protect themselves and to prevent non-gypsies from understanding what they meant. Before we go any further, there are two additional things that are important to keep in mind. Firstly, the name Erro Minchela itself is a relatively recent thing. It was only coined sometime in the 80s, and it's quite doubtful that the Romani community living in the Basque countries would call themselves that. Now, I may be wrong about this, but they would have most likely historically been referred to as Ijitoac, which literally just means gypsy in Basque. Gypsies in Spanish is Los Gitanos, by the way. Secondly, there is another group descended from the Romanis called the Calais, whose language is called Caló, which is mostly influenced by Spanish and Portuguese. They are found all throughout the Iberian Peninsula, from Portugal, Spain, places such as Catalonia, Galicia, and the Basque country as well. The two groups aren't immediately related to each other and are the descendants of two different waves of Romanis that migrated to the area at different times. However, because both languages ultimately derive from Romani, the root words are very similar between the two. It's just that I'm mentioning this because people seem to confuse the two, and if you decide to do further reading after the video, just know that there is a difference. In any case, now let's briefly talk about the Erro Minchela language and why it absolutely blew my mind when I found out it existed. Now, because this community was integrated into Basque society relatively well, at least in comparison to other Romani communities, all speakers of Erro Minchela are, by definition, also speakers of various dialects of Basque. However, when it comes to vocabulary, nearly all of it is derived from Romani. We can see in this table a comparison between Erro Minchela and the root Romani dialect of the Caldorash Roma. And again, the root words are also all very similar to Caló as well. But essentially what happened with Erro Minchela is that the Caldorash Romani dialect was Basqueified if that makes sense. So vocabulary is almost all Romani, but grammar and syntax are pretty much entirely Basque. We can see in this table that the verbal inflections are pretty much identical to those found in Basque. Which brings us to the main reason why I found this whole story so fascinating. This would make Erro Minchela a Romani language with Basque grammar. That is insane. Erro Minchela is an absolute of ergative language with Indo-Aryan vocabulary. If you have some knowledge of linguistic classification and typology, you must agree with me how, how wild this is. Like, this is so freaking cool, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. We're not really going to be going into explaining exactly what ergative absolute of alignment is in this video. If you'd like a more detailed explanation, I've gone more in depth on it in my video on Keras. It's like towards the end of the video. But for the purposes of this video, just know that every language in Europe is nominative accusative, with Basque being pretty much the only exception, and its grammar is ergative absolutive. Yes, I'm aware that the Caucasus exists, but I'm not really including it in this specific example of geographic linguistic distribution, and it's a whole other can of worms. Anyway, the main reason why Basque is so famous in the linguistic community and why they're joked about being aliens and stuff is specifically because of their ergative absolute of grammar, which is unlike any other language in Europe. So the existence of Erro Minchela and how it's the result of a mixture between the ancient mysterious Basque language and the language of the nomadic Indo-Aryan Romani is such a mind-blowing, unexpected and, quite frankly, absolutely random development in the history of the world. I live for stuff like this, man. This is just, it's so bizarre that this exists in the first place. Like, it's not, it's just, I don't know. Like, to me, it's such a strange thing that it exists. And it's so cool that it exists because it's so, it shouldn't exist, but it does. <laughs> Here's a few more examples for you to kind of see how this stuff works. This table shows the morphology and the different word endings depending on the grammatical case, which is pretty much identical to Basque. 
And interestingly, when forming infinitive verbs, in most cases, it's the Romani root plus the Basque ending tu. So, for example, to cook in Romani is pakav, and in Erromincella it would be pecatu. Piav is to drink in Romani, and in Erromincella it would be piatu. If you're a speaker of Basque, I'd be very curious to hear some of your thoughts in the comments when you think of all of this. Like, like, does it at all feel kind of trippy to you reading this stuff? Or, you know, <laughs> also the writing system is very much Basque looking. Notice how all of it is written. All the Zs and all the TXs, very distinctly Basque. Though that may again be a bit of a stretch on my part because there definitely has never been a standardized orthography as Erro Mincella was virtually never ever written down before relatively recently. And none of the sources I found mention anything about spelling, so who knows. But it does seem kind of appropriate to be writing it down using Basque orthography. So, Now Erro Mincella is far from the only instance of a Romani-based mixed language. There have been many such cases throughout history. It's actually a phenomenon called para-Romani. Other examples include Calo, mentioned previously, which is romance-based. Then there's Shelta, Anglo-Romani, and Scottish Cant, spoken around the UK and Ireland. There's Romano-Greek, Romano-Serbian, there's one based on Armenian, on Estonian, on Persian, and many, many more. And they're all fascinating in their own way and definitely deserve their own videos. But in my eyes, Erromincella being Basque-based makes it absolutely unique in this category, and that's why I really wanted to talk about it. Now let's move on to a bit of the research that's been done on Erromincella in the past, as well as what state it is in today. There were a few accounts of the language dating back to like the mid-1800s, but the first most extensive study was done by Alexandre Baudrimont in 1862 in his Vocabulaire de la langue des Bohémiens habitant les Pays Basques français. I found a digitalized version of the entire thing, link in the description. Highly recommend you check it out if you happen to speak French. However, this is one of the sources that I mentioned that I'm not sure how reliable it really is, since apparently he based all of it on only two informants, a mother and a daughter, with whom he only had one session with, because some people in their community didn't like Baudrimont speaking to them, so they had to stop. But he still went ahead and compiled this whole study on vocabulary and grammar. So, grains of salt all around. There were a few others that produced short dictionaries and collected bits of data here and there in the early 1900s, such as Resurrección Maria de Ascue and Pierre Londe in their dictionaries of 1905 and 1926 respectively, but it wasn't until the late 80s and early 90s that the real serious efforts began. There is an organization called Calé d'Orcaico. Formed in 1989, its purpose is to promote Romani culture in the Basque country. Initially, it would mainly deal with Calo, the romance-based language, but sometime in the 90s it was notified of the existence of Erro Mincella thanks to an article written by Alicia Sturze titled Agotes, Jews and Gypsies in the Basque Country. Side note, the Agotes, also known as the Cago, are another ethnic minority with a really weird and super interesting history that I've never heard of before. Look them up, story for another time. Anyway, Calé d'Orcaico, with support from the University of the Basque Country and Euskalciandia, the official regulatory institution for the Basque language, commissioned for someone to carry out research on Erro Minchela and find out what the hell it even is, really. Yosune Muñoz and Elias López de Muña undertook this task in 1996 and have produced the most detailed research to date. There's a video I found where Oscar Vizarraga, who is the vice president of Caledor Caigo, summarizes everything from the history of the Romani people in the Basque country to the Erromincella language and how they conducted the research and what they found out in a very nice and concise manner. Link in the description, I highly recommend you check it out, however it is in Spanish. At this point you might be thinking, we're more than halfway through the video and I still have no idea how many people actually speak it, nor what the language actually sounds like. Very fair questions. First of all, how many people of Romani origin are there in the Basque country today? Well, one source from 2010 says around 20,000, another source from 2016 says around 28,000, and a third source from 2023 says around 14,000. But at the same time, all of them say that the numbers are not exact and it's hard to give a correct estimate, so let's just meet in the middle and say like 20,000-ish? When it comes to the number of speakers, the issue is I found some conflicting information. 
There was allegedly a survey conducted in 1997 as part of the research efforts, which cites the figure of 500 to 1,000 native speakers. That is a pretty big margin, and also there is no real information on how fluently people spoke it, what the age distribution is, do they even teach the language at home anymore, none of that. And then Oscar Vizarraga said in 2016, When we started researching, we thought we would find a dead language, and we were very wrong. Nowadays, only the older generation speaks, as the young people learn Basque and leave Erro Minchela aside. Furthermore, I found an article from 2019 in Spanish which talks about the Romani community in the Basque country as a whole and the issues and the struggles that they have as a community. And in it, they mention the Erromenchela language and how it's pretty much extinct at this point. Additionally, I found a video of a Basque journalist and politician named Merche Aispurua who addressed the parliament in 2022 on the issues that Romani people face in the Basque country. In it, she specifically talks about Erro Minchela, and she mentions that the last speaker of the language died at the end of the last century. So, I don't know, man. If there are any speakers left today, it's probably just a handful, and the future of the language doesn't look very good, to be honest. I just couldn't find anything else on this question, except for the stuff that I just mentioned, and I never personally tried contacting Caledor Caico for more information, which they could probably provide us with a clear answer in hindsight. <laughs> However, using this same video of Merche Aispurua, I will segue into the question of what the language actually sounds like. There is a poem by Basque writer Jon Mirande called Kama Goli. It was written at some point between 1950 and 1966, and it is, at least to my knowledge, the only work ever produced in Erro Minchela, seeing how it's always been an exclusively oral language. At the end of her speech, Merche Aispurua actually read a little excerpt from the poem and I thought it was a very powerful way to end her speech and I thought it would be really cool to share that clip with you. So, here it is. Kama Goli, de John Mirande. <clears throat> Iretzat Goli, kerautzen dinat, erromeetako gazin mindroa, ene muirako mandro londoa, mol loloena, ene Kerchiman. Así, así sonaba el Erromincela, la lengua de los gitanos y de las gitanas vascas. Es que ricasco. This poem, by the way, I found three different renditions of it on YouTube, of people actually singing it. And I have to say, it is catchy as hell. Two of them just sing the original lyrics, but the third one is more of like an adaptation and they add some of their own words to it. And in the video, they actually include the Erro Minchela lyrics along with translations in Basque, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So you could follow along, compare the languages, and actually understand what they're saying. How cool is that? Links to all three of them in the video description. But in any case, this is basically all of the information I could find in Erro Minchela. And so, this is where our story comes to an end. There were a few other things that I could have gone a bit more in depth in, like the history of the Romani people, how the language itself works, and the modern issues that the Romani community in the Basque country faces today. I apologize if the video felt a bit disappointing in terms of not providing you with enough substance. I feel like I've just kind of been rambling a little bit. Throughout their entire history, the Romani people have been discriminated against anywhere they went, and it's still an issue today. This isn't what this video is about, but it's impossible not to mention, and I think it's still very important to highlight this issue. There was this one quote from that 2019 Spanish article by a Basque Romani woman. I thought it was a very powerful quote, and I think it would be appropriate to read it here. I don't want to stop being a gypsy. I don't want my steps marked. I don't want to be criticized for what I do or don't do. I want them to love me as I am with my dark face, with my black hair, with my long earrings, or with the red of my lips. I want to grow old in my own way. I don't want to be called good when I die for doing something that others want. There will be a bunch of links in the video description below. I highly recommend you check all of them out, and especially this one Spanish article, um, which has a lot of very interesting stuff on the contemporary issues that the Romani community faces in the Basque country today. But the main purpose of this video is really just to let you all know that this crazy cultural and linguistic anomaly actually exists. 
and give you a very, very brief summary on what it is. Stories like these make the world we live in so much more colorful and interesting, and I think it's something that should be learned about and celebrated. To all the Romani people of the world, I wish you all the absolute best. May your cultures and languages survive and thrive for many generations to come. And now, as an outro, I will be reading the rest of the Erromincella poem mentioned earlier. Kamagoli by Jon Mirande. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great day and a wonderful night, and I hope to see you all again here soon. Now, reading poem. Apologies for the pronunciation, it's probably not the most authentic. Hiret sad goli kerautsen dinat, erome tako gazin mendroa, ene mui rako mandro londoa, mol loloena ene kertsiman. Hire dui ankai barro kaloek, pekhautsen nine kamatse yakaz. Piria hautsiz eromenitsat, letu hindudan latsias geros. Zoan michaya panintinora, pindro danzariz teshalitsen zan. Haize kilalos chokiak upre, ni hari kuti dibilo tua. Zed horren chaya pindro danzariz, panin parnoa panine koan. Deghato nuen dibezi hartan, deghato eta kamatu nuen. Kerean chiautu ninsan harikin, eransi nauskon harentrin sokak. Eransu naukon gata parnoa, chalibelerat eramitean. Chali belean zuautu duyok, zuad zekorik gabelatsian, latsi gustion dutik gabean, pekautu ninsan kamatse yakas. Heure kamatses pekauten niagon, kalo kastako neure mindroa, ene mol lolo eta mandroa, ene latsien duta haizen hi. Thank you and good night.